Just like jazz, I improvised. <laughs> Giant chronicles the life of a teenager named Dai Miyamoto, a student in Japan who is one day taken to a jazz show by his friend and decides that very night he's going to be the best sax player of all time. He gives up college, playing basketball, and gives up his hometown and friends so he can go all in to a genre where many people deem it a dying business. Now, I came across this title when, um, I, when I was on Twitter and I just came across this trailer for an anime film that's actually coming out in Japan in February. So there's gonna be an animated film based on, you know, this story. Whether it does the whole set of volumes or just part of the chapters, I, I don't fully know yet. But it, it caught my interest when I saw the trailer. You know, every week I would just go into Newberry Comics and then just, you know, in my head I would always decide like, okay, am I gonna pick this up or not? And the main reason why I was hesitant is because it's a manga series about music. So you're not going to be able to hear anything. You have to imagine everything. And I thought, well, that's going to be a turnoff. I feel like that's just going to be boring if I have to picture the music in my head. Um, mind you, I'm like a musician, as you can see back there. But, you know, would that actually be fun? Like, I can only imagine a non-musician you know, musician person picking this up and just thinking, like, I don't want to picture, you know, music in my head. Um... All that just to say that I was pleasantly surprised when I finally picked up the first uh, omnibus of the first two volumes. So they come in these omnibuses of two volumes in one, um, and it gives you like a good chunk of the stories in each omnibus. And when I picked up chap um, volumes one through two, I was just instantly hooked. And I think definitely more people need to check this out. Um, it was a really fun read. I didn't think that I would actually enjoy something like this where I would have to enjoy, where I would have to uh, imagine the music in my head. You know, with manga, it's a medium where you have the pictures and the text, so you don't really have to use your imagination for much, but this is the first time I really had to just think about what I was reading because it's all about just playing music. You know, it's not like the typical series where you know, it's about characters fighting each other in order to obtain a goal. You know, this is really just like a very contemplative, very just pensive and just introspective type of story. Um, without it being like pretentious, like at all, because it could have easily gone that way, especially given how the jazz community can sometimes be very snobby. Um, I'm happy to tell you that this book just is super accessible to anyone who is a fan of comics or manga in general. Um, you don't have to be a musician or a huge music lover or music connoisseur in order to appreciate something like this. Um, the story is just very simple. It's, it's super simplistic without it being boring. And I think that's like a hard balance to, you know, kind of have in a story. So when I started reading the first couple chapters, you know, instantly it just, it hooks you in. Um, we follow this character named Dai, who you see at first that he, he's like this regular teenager who's just playing basketball and he's good at it. Um, but you quickly see that he's not really that interested in it as like a passion or, you know, a career field. Um, he seems kind of lost, which is a very relatable thing for a lot of teenagers who aren't sure what they want to do with their lives uh, post high school. You know, the typical thing is going to college, but even then, once you're in college, a lot of times you're just kind of, you know, going after degrees just because you feel like you have to and you're not necessarily sure if you're going to do something with that with your life. Um, so it's a very relatable story as well. Even if you're not big on like music and jazz, it's very much just like a very introspective life type of story. I actually really was like taken with the first couple of pages and and they don't really waste time. They kind of show you uh, Dai already, you know, in the midst of playing his saxophone. He goes out to this riverbank like every day and every night, no matter what the climate is, he's out there in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the winter, just blowing hard on that sax. Um, and then they, they, they play with time a little bit. They kind of cut back every once in a while to flashbacks to see how he got to the point of wanting to play jazz. And then you also have um, panels of the future 
where we have characters that he meets along the way who are being interviewed by you know an unknown sort of entity we know there's like a cameraman there but we don't know who's interviewing these people and you quickly realize that died does achieve this dream of being the greatest jazz player ever so you just at this point you're along for the ride to know how exactly he gets to that point so and this is one of those stories where i just feel like knowing the outcome right off the bat doesn't really spoil anything um and, I, and I'm not giving away any spoilers because this is something that easily comes up within the first couple of chapters in the first two volumes. The whole point of this journey is to take in how he learned how to become the musician that he is today. Um, and that's always fascinating. I mean, we watch documentaries all the time of our favorite musicians. So we always love to see what it was like for them coming up um, into this business. You know, we're always like pointing a magnifying glass into like our idols' lives to see, you know, how are they like when they were just a regular person? Like how, how were they before they blew up? Um, and it's just fascinating to sort of explore that in a manga series. Real quick, I just wanna talk about like the art style because the art is always like the most crucial thing in a manga series. I feel like it, it tends to make or break a person's decision on whether they're gonna pick up a copy or not. You know, if the drawings suck, it's going to be much harder to sell something like that. Um, even with a great story, you know, it, people could easily be turned off by just like lazy illustration or just bad illustration. The pages are great. Uh, the character designs, the environments, they're drawn simple, but not lazy. And then when, you know, when there's like a huge epic moment, you know, specifically whenever a musician is going up on stage and just laying it all out there, um, there's these wonderful, beautiful splash pages of characters just like, you know, in the middle of like a solo, like you, there's pages of like Dai, for example, with a tenor sax, he's just like blowing on this thing. And it you see the expression in the faces and their body movements. And you see like, you know, sweat and like, there's sometimes even colored pages where it just shows you like all the lighting and all like, you know, the glistening sweat on players who are going hard on their performance. It really just looks like a poster that you could easily hang on your wall. And I, I wish, now I really wish I had some posters, but there's like barely any type of, you know, exposure in the US at least regarding Blue Giant. You know, it's not like this huge hit. It's kind of like this very quiet, very small niche type of thing, which it makes sense because we're talking about jazz, which is sort of like a, a breed of music that's just like not popular anymore. Um, and for a teenager to go into this business, um, you know, in like the 2010s, that, that's pretty ballsy. I mean, jazz is really not the most profitable genre. If you're going to go any music route, you know, usually it's like pop or hip hop these days. Uh, jazz was once the huge zeitgeist in, in the U.S., but that, that's long gone. And then even in Japan, that, that's even more so. Um, and they, they really explore those, those conversations as well. There'll be a couple of characters who show up for like maybe a couple of panels, not even a whole chapter. And they'll have really fascinating conversations about their careers. You know, there's a lot of seasoned older characters who've been in the jazz field for decades. And they sometimes talk about how, you know, once upon a time they were so, sort of like living off their music, at least for a couple of years. Um, but then it quickly died down. You know, when, when they start putting out albums that just no longer were like, huge hits for anyone like as soon as you reach the top of that mountain it's really just a, a crash uh, for jazz musicians and you know Dai is sort of ignorant to this at first he I don't think he's gotten to the point where he's really seen how musicians truly struggle um, you know trying to live off of their own you know creations and their own content um, so for, for them to have like these conversations, even with just like the side characters that you see, um, it sort of just builds the world of this series of how treacherous it can be to be a musician who's trying to solely depend on their own music and not have to, you know, pick up other jobs in the meantime and just, you know, trying to fund their, um, their real dreams. And sadly, that, that is the case, you know, just like in real life, a lot of these characters, they're working, you know, multiple jobs. Uh, Dai at one point has to work a construction job as well as, um, you know, a, like a gas station st um, stop as well. 
and, and he'll always like do like these, these odd jobs every once in a while. And then late at night, he'll go to these jazz clubs and just perform with his uh, newly found band later on in the series. And they're just out there just trying to get exposed as much as they can. They go to festivals, they go to nightclubs. You know, they do whatever they can while still working these jobs that they don't care about. Um, he even has a friend at one point, a roommate, um, who just decides he's just going to flunk one semester of college <laughs> because he, he was so inspired by Dai to pick up the drums for the first time and play in his band. Um, which takes me to how great the character of Dai Miyamoto is. He is, he's kind of like a simpleton. He, he's one of those characters who um, is very narrow-minded. Um, he's, like, he's just super goal-oriented. Especially once Jazz hits him, it, it, it was all over. Like nothing else in his rearview mirrors or his back mirrors is just like nothing mattered to him at that point. Um, he even has a chance to like go on a date with this girl multiple times actually there's multiple times where he could easily ask somebody out and we see that he has feelings she's also interested interested in him but he just knows that he's just not going to be able to be there for her when he's in the midst of achieving this dream um and that's the case with a lot of people who are in the music world you know you have to travel a lot you have to give up a lot of nights um, especially after coming off of a nine to five or like a couple of, uh, part-time jobs, you know, there's very little time to really have a stable relationship when you are chasing an unstable career. And, you know, those are like really great moments that we get with Dai. Like we, we see like a very earnest character who he knows what he wants and he knows what he should avoid and what he should do in order to get to that point of being a great musician. Sadly, you just have to give up some of those things, even if you really want it, you know, and that, that's just like a relevant thing, no matter what story you're telling, you know, we always want to be able to have everything, but there's just no way we can fit everything that we want in our lives. The biggest point of, of this story, like the biggest takeaway is, you know, the music, you know, you have to imagine what they're playing. And I could see how this was like a huge turnoff for a lot of people because, you know, you want to be able to read a manga series where you just know exactly what's going on. You know, to bring in something like an auditory element into the story is very difficult because it's all just pages. You know, you're not seeing the anime, you're not hearing the music, so you have to imagine it. And that turned me off at first. Like, I'm uh, again, like, I, I, I took a couple of weeks to like really decide if I wanted to start picking up the, you know, the whole series. And then week by week, you know, I just kept picking one up, picking one up until finally I just, I bought like the, the last three in bulk. Um, just because th there was very limited copies um, wherever I went. Like I went to two different Newberry comics just so I could collect, you know, all 10 volumes. And I was actually there earlier today and I only see like one copy available now. Like it doesn't seem like they're really refilling on this, um, on this manga series. So I'm really glad I picked up the whole thing because this is like honestly like a, a treasure of a story it, it's it's so good it's it's so concise and so clear in what it wants to tell you and the fact that you're easily able to imagine the music like you know I'm new I'm I'm not new to jazz I grew up loving it since I was a kid you know my dad one day put it on the radio and I, ever since then you know I knew that I fell in love with that genre um but, you know, I'm not the most advanced musician. Like, I'm actually in the midst of learning a lot still. But I feel like even somebody who's never picked up an instrument, they could easily picture what this music sounds like. You know, if you've heard any sort of jazz song, you can just build off of that. And then that would be your blueprint uh, your blueprint from there. Um, so I, I honestly wouldn't worry about, you know, are you going to be bored because you can't hear the music? It's going to come out of you. And... It's really cool because you just don't know what sort of sounds you're going to hear in your head until you pick up that book and then read the next page. And each reader is going to have their own unique take on what the music sounds like. Um, you know, every once in a while, they'll show like some chords on some sheet music and stuff, but they don't ever show you like a full like diagram of, OK, this is what the song looks and sounds like. You know, you kind of just have to go along at, while the players are playing. Um, so I, I would highly recommend this. Um, usually I would have like any critiques or any negatives. I really don't have anything to complain about. I mean, other than wanting some longer moments between characters, because sometimes there's like interactions 
and then it moves on to like the next chapter and i just wish that some characters just stayed with those conversations a little bit longer but that's like a minor nitpick um really my only major complaint is that the united states really only has the first series um licensed and published out uh there's a sequel series called blue giant supreme and then there's also blue giant traveler that's currently you know in the midst of its um run as well and you know blue giant supreme is sadly not available in the u.s yet um it's available in germany and france i believe since the character eventually goes to Germany and then France in order to study abroad um, to get better at his playing. So whenever the sequel series comes out in here, I'll be like first in line. I'll be, you know, researching, <laughs> digging online, trying to be the first person to get the next copies because I am so in love with this series. And I really think you guys should check this out too. And anyone who's like a manga fan or, you know, into music and you don't really read manga very much, this is honestly like a breeze. Like you could read through like a whole first two volumes in one night. That's what I did every single night is I kind of blew through them in a couple hours. Um, this is like a, a hidden gem for sure. And I'll be very curious to see how the anime pulls this off. I, I don't know how much it's gonna cover story-wise. Um, some of the music sounds fantastic already. So I'm excited for that. Um, so yeah, that's basically, that's all of Blue Giants. Um, I don't want to get into like plot details and all that stuff. I feel like you guys should definitely just check it out. Um, I just wanted you guys to sort of get an understanding of my general impressions and sort of, you know, get the idea that this is a fun book to read. You don't have to be a musician in order to understand anything. And, you know, in terms of hearing the music, it'll honestly come from you. Like, you'll be surprised at what you create in your head as you're reading this. It's so awesome. So that's basically it. And I hope you guys, you know, check this out. If you do check it out, please, you know, leave some comments and just let me know what you think. Until then, guys, uh, see you later.